Hello, Chris Mir here and this time I'll show you how to get the modes from the Nogrux Ocean. I'll cover the Ocean Sim and Ocean Spectrum nodes grounded in Jerry Tessendorf's work on Spectral Ocean Wave Simulation. So let's start by creating a Nogrux in the scene and I'll just move the Nogrux icon aside. When working with Nogrux Ocean, the first and most important node is the Ocean Sim node. You can create it by right clicking and selecting it from the menu or simply press uh, tab key and type the node name. Once created, it will generate uh, one particle with a flat surface as a particle shape. It will also automatically generate four particle groups, one for the ocean shape and the others for foam, bubble and spray, par spray particles that you may create in your ocean simulation. The use GPU op option is enabled by default, which tells ocean nodes to execute CUDA code instead of CPU. The Ocean Spectrum is one of those nodes that can use the CUDA FFT libraries to generate the Ocean Spectrum. Now to control the position of the ocean surface, you can create a point helper object in the scene by pressing this button. It will also automatically create an object info node and make the connection to retrieve the helper's transformation matrix. Now we will begin with the uniform grid and once we are done with the setup we will switch to the adaptive grid and I'll explain it later. The ocean sim node generates the ocean surface geometry and is also responsible for foam and bubble simulation. However, it won't generate any waves. So to actually create ocean waves we will need another node named ocean spectrum. It has lots of options that allow you to create all sorts of wave patterns. Now since Nodrux is a node-based system, so the ocean is, and it's very simple to, to combine multiple spectra by using masks or just adding them directly. Next, let's look at the first parameter here, which is the resolution. It defines how detailed the spectrum will be, it's a power of 2, so a resolution of 9 will generate a spectrum tile of 512 by 512. The tile is spread over the ocean surface across the area defined by the size parameter. So let me explain this a little bit further. So let's increase the number of ocean mesh segments to 512 and set the width and length to 256. To see the waves better, I will increase the height to 2 and for the demonstration I will set the size to 64. So in world space over an area of 64 by 64 we will have one ocean tile. Since the entire mesh is 256 by 256 that means that mesh has 4 by 4, four tiles repeating over this surface. This can be clearly visible here and we can count around 4x4 four four tiles. This spectrum is calculated in world space which means that when we move the ocean surface it is moving through the spectrum space. To demonstrate this further I'll copy instance the ocean spectrum node and make a regular copy of the ocean, ocean sim node with a different position helper so we can move them independently. Now if I move the second ocean seam to the border of first one you'll see that they perfectly match. At the same time you still have the freedom to set up the ocean geometry as you, as you like. Now since the spectrums are instanced changing option in one will automatically reflect on the other one. Now this was just for demonstration and we don't need those nodes anymore so I am going to delete them. Now let's move to the next parameter, the ocean spectrum center. It is used to shift the spectrum so that you can position waves as you wish. But what if you want the waves to say stay locked when you move the ocean sim position helper and not shift? This is easy to accomplish. All we need to do is to use the position of the ocean sim point helper for the spectrum center. To do this, drag a connection from the ocean transformation matrix pin, press tab and type matrix to create the matrix node. We need to pass the translation output to the spectrum center and now the spectrum is locked. 
when move the ocean surface, the spectrum space will move along with it. Of course, you can always drop in a math node in between, and you can add some constant offsets to the wave and do any other math that you like to do. Now, we don't need this anymore, so we can simply, simply disconnect the matrix node, and that's it. Now, let's look at the parameters under the shape world. These allow you to generate specific wave patterns with many variations you can experiment with. Here, I'll focus on frequency clamping as, it can be, as this can be a very helpful option. As mentioned before, the resolution of the spectrum is 9, which creates a 512 by 512 tile. If I choose to clamp low frequencies, frequencies, it will remove all the big waves with long wavelengths. On the other hand, if I clamp high fre frequencies, it will remove the small waves with short wavelengths. At first, nothing happens when I enter a value like 7 or even 6, because the ocean mesh is too coarse to capture that detail. So, let's change the spectrum size to 500, ocean sim to 500 by 500, and increase the mesh segments to 1000. I'll also increase now spectrum height to 20. Now, if you set clamp to 7, you can see that the fine detail is actually being removed. For, for now, I'll tune down the mesh segments to 500. Now, if you compute the simulation, you can see the waves nicely move, and thanks to memory caching, everything's in the memory available for you to scrub the time slider. Next, let's cover the motion parameters. The wind direction tell, tells us the angle where the wind blows. So, a value of zero means that waves will propagate towards the positive x axis. So, a value of 180 would mean that the waves will propagate towards the negative x axis. Propagation speed determines how fast the waves will move. By default, all waves propagate in a positive direction. However, for small enclosed spaces, if you, for example, are going to create a pool, you may want waves traveling in all, all directions. So, if I set reflected waves to 1, then there will be waves propagating in, in every direction. Now, finally, let's take a look at tile variation, which is best demonstrated with an adaptive ocean surface. Now, set the width to 200 and length to 5000. And I'll need to increase a little bit for field of view expand to cover the camera field of view and the value of 8 is going to cover the camera field of view. As you can see, there are no holes anymore in the viewport. However, keep in mind if you use the high choppiness values, it, disform it deforms the mesh so you can, you can uh, have uh, holes appearing. So increase the fall of expense as, as long as until the mesh covers the camera view. Now, since this is a very large mesh, we use the degradation rate of 5 to reduce the number of faces in the distance. However, close, close to the camera, I want the maximum detail, so I will set the degradation start to 500. This means that at the distance of 500 units from the camera, the degradation will start. For the faces that are closer to the camera, there will be no degradation at all. With such a large mesh, tiling patterns in the distance become obvious. This could be reduced by adding more spectrum layers with different shapes and sizes, but the fastest way is to enable the tile variation option. By changing the seed, you can change how the, those variations uh, behave and forming different patterns. To get even more detail, we can decrease the ocean seam with and length spacing values to 0.5. Now, let's go back to the ocean spectrum node 
and reduce the wave height to something more realistic. Now set the height to 7 and I want these waves to be a little bit more directional so I'll set the swell to 0 0.5. I'll also increase the propagation speed to 2.0. Now let's say you want to add some big low frequency waves and combine them with the current ones. To do this create a new ocean spectrum node and disable the first one so we can have a better look. I'll keep the resolution at 9 but increase the size to 1000 and set the height to 10. Now change the spectrum type to TMA and the random type to Gauss. I want these waves to have maximum directionality so I'll set the swell to 1. I'll set the chappy to 0 so that we get large smooth, smoothly curved waves. If you want to keep only the low frequency waves you can enable clamp high frequencies and set it to 1. This will leave only the lowest frequencies uh, and remove all the detail from the waves. Which by the way will get all the detail from the first node. So I set the pr propagation speed to 2 so these waves roll faster as well. Finally I'll enable the tie variation again and set the rotation variation to 0 since I want all those waves to be aligned. Now I'm going to enable the first spectrum and we see now that both spectrums are combined. They are combined just by addition. Now if you want to reduce the contribution of the first spectrum now we can simply lower it the high, the, its height to 5 for example. And this is one example how to stack two different spectrums. However, spectrums can also be blended by using the height mask, which we'll do next but on a different exa example that is more suited for this. In this scene I want to create localized wind-induced ripples on top of the calm sea waves. You can see that this is already set, set up as a very detailed adaptive grid, which might slow us down when setting up the simulation. So, I will change it to the uniform grid for now with a much smaller area that would still represent our ocean and waves. Now also let's go and disable the main waves and add new ocean spectrum node. First I'm going to enable tile variation, set the rotation to 2 and reduce the height to 20%. This is to remove the tiling that will be visible in the final uh, simulation so we can enable it right away. Now with this variation we had a little bit more uh, differences between each tile and you won't notice tiling of those small waves. Now the main spectrum has a resolution of 10 and size of 311 and for this one I'll keep the same resolution but decrease the size to 71 which will generate much smaller waves. For the shape I'm going to switch to the DMA spectrum and reduce the wind speed to 5 to generate finer details. Now let's talk about the fetch parameter. It represents the distance over which the wind blows across the ocean surface. The higher the fetch value is, the bigger and more developed, developed the waves are. Since I want small ripples, I reduce it to 10 to suppress the large wavelengths and to promote uh, shorter wavelengths and smaller waves. Next, the swell. I'll set it to 0.5, which gives the waves a little bit stronger directionality. Chop is going to be reduced to 0.3 for a little bit more smoother crests and the original waves had a direction of 230 degrees but for these ripples I'm going to make a little bit different uh, direction so I'm going to set it to 270 and increase the propagation speed to 2.1. Now as you can see we have a lot of small directional waves that are aligned with the wind. Now this wind of 270 is actually along the negative y axis. Now as you can see all those waves are now generated across the surface 
but I don't want them everywhere, I just need them to be localized, so I'm going to use a mask to control where they, they appear. So I go to the height mask and set it to pearly noise. To better visualize what we're doing, I'm going to enable the height mask visualization, set size to 2000 and subdivisions to 200. As you can see, this lets us see the noise mask directly inside the viewport. The noise needs to be much larger, so I'm going to change the size to 2000 and size on the y-axis to 1600. At the moment the noise looks very uniform and I want sharper transition for those localized waves. To achieve that, I'll adjust the low a high threshold. If I set a low threshold to 0 0.5, all val values below 0 0.5 will have the value as defined by the output mean parameter, which is 0 in our case. If you want uh, to have a little bit of those small waves everywhere, you can set the output mean parameter to any, anything above 0, for example, for 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc. Now, if I set the height ratio to 0 0.6, every noise that is above is going to be pushed to the value defined by the output max parameter, which is 1.0 in our case. Now I want to reposition the noise, so I'll move the center on the X axis to negative 900 units and along the Y axis to 900. Just like with the SIM and spectrum point helpers, you can also add a new point helper for the nose position and control it interactively. This becomes especially useful, useful if you want to animate the noise motion over time, which reduces now to the animating the point helper position. At the moment, the noise is static. However, you can add some subtle movement by setting the phase shift to 1.0. Now, I'm going to show you how this final animation looks when rendered. And I hope this tutorial helped you understand the basics of the Nodrox Ocean. And in the next tutorial, I move on to ocean foam and bubbles, and as well as ocean dynamics to bring even more realism into your simulation.